Welcome to this week's Fireside Chat with Jesse. I am joined today by Sean Scampton, Head of Sales at LeasePath. Thanks for joining me, Sean. Thanks for having me, Jesse. Pleasure to be here. Nah, it's uh, great to have you on the program. Probably uh, one of the best backgrounds I've seen, natural backgrounds, I guess, I've seen uh, by any guest. And I think we're almost up to episode 210. So uh, it's phenomenal and fingers crossed for no weather. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it, 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 I, I'm calling you from uh, just outside of Tampa, Florida today. And uh, I, I will admit that uh, Florida is well known for the really snap thunderstorm. But uh, looking around, I think we got clear skies for at least the, the next hour or so. I hope I didn't just jinx that, but sorry, sorry, sorry. The, sec the, the second that you would get into your first question, that that, that cloud's coming. <laughs> All right, well, we're plowing through, even if it's the first question or sixth question, man, we're going. So uh, for Sean, the people who haven't had the pleasure of meeting you, do you mind just kind of introducing yourself in career and equipment finance? Boy, yeah. Um, so uh, uh, Sean Scampton, uh, head of sales here at LeasePath. I, I used to say that on my on my meetings, so it's very common for me to just rattle that off, right? Uh, I've been head of sales here at LeasePath for a little more than seven years now. Uh, in fact, I was employee number six of the uh, of the company way back when we were all just in a closet outside of uh, Toronto. And uh, I've been fortunate enough to uh, to watch the company grow along uh, alongside me, right? As I've continued to evolve as a professional and grow in my skills, so has the company really continued to evolve and professionalize. And it's been really exciting to watch that. Um, but my background, I cut my teeth, uh, like frankly, a lot of sales guys that we uh, that we all interact with uh, by uh, hucking copiers, right? Up and down the streets of uh, in the Twin Cities. Uh, I worked for a copier vendor for three years and I would, you know, throw copiers in the back of my, in the back of my truck and, uh, you know, take them all up to all, all up and down the twin cities, uh, try to, you know, to, to try to close those deals. And, uh, you know, I really, I learned a, a lot, not, not just about sales, but I learned a whole lot about the equipment finance business. Cause I was throwing those deals right to DLL or GE capital, or I sold a ton of deals to us bank bank back in the day. Uh, and that was also my first exposure to sort of captive, uh, captive manufacturer teams, right? Because we did a little bit of our own financing when we couldn't find, uh, when we couldn't find a deal with any of our funders, then we would take those and, you know, pay those out uh, quarterly uh, in arrears. <laughs> and uh, we, <laughs> boy, did we all hate those deals. <laughs> sure, sure. Uh, but uh, yeah, I cut, you know, you, I cut my teeth in a place where, uh, you know, sales guys really have to sink or swim and. It was a great, uh, a great introduction to the business, and and then I got to come back and um, come back into the industry. This this business really pulls you back, right? Got to come back on the software side and uh, get to provide an incredible solution and platform to the business for uh, with with LeasePath. It's interesting. So um, I learned that a couple of weeks ago. Um, we were on a call with a, a potential client of yours. That that's how you cut your teeth, and you can imagine. I mean, my first sales job was Yellow Book. So sink or swim, I think yes. I was maybe one of 20 people that lasted more than six months going literally up and down business to business with a book in your hand. I mean, I don't know how it was a book. Yep. You, you had a cut, you had a printer. So it's like, you could try to go walk into a business. <laughs> hey, how are you with a printer in your hand? At least I just got a book when I got thrown out. <laughs> <laughs> On the plus side, dragging dragging copiers up and down the street like that'll really work your upper body strength. So I I, I got in I got in pretty decent shape doing that. So I'm not, uh, no no complaints. But um, but yeah, I mean there that's that the yellow the yellow the yellow pages. I mean boy, that is such a such a great introduction to what sales really is, right? Which is just relationships is uh, and and following through on on your commitments, right? Uh, if you can do the, if you can build a relationship with your customers and build their trust by just continuously setting expectations and following through with them, you're going to do great in a, in, in a, in a business like that. And I, I just have so much respect for, you know, e even the cop, there are guys that are still doing it that I left behind back in Minnesota and uh, boy, they're making great money doing that. And it's such a great business. And uh, you got to respect uh, those, those folks that are, are, you know, really grinding every day. Right. Ah, 100% tough business. However, like you said, it's relationship. And uh, I remember the question that I would ask people when they'd see the book, when they wouldn't even give me an audience. And it's like, what did someone do so horribly to you? Can I just, you just tell me what someone did so bad that you won't even like have a 30 second conversation? Because I'm not, I'll, I'll leave it out. I'll leave it. I'll go put it in my car. 
but just can you please tell me your bad experience? And then when you just do that, it automatically disarms them. <laughs> totally. Totally. And then you get a client for life because then they're going to be like, oh, okay, you actually care. Yeah, they, they, you actually you actually care and, you know, you, you find something to relate with, you know, and, and that's, uh, you know, and, and people in this business and equipment finance know, right, when you find that thing that you can relate to your customer with, right, when the two of you really relate to each other on on that note, it, that, that builds a, a bond that's, you know, really, really tough to break. And, you know, you'll go through trials, you'll go through, uh, you know, push and pull disagreements uh, that are business in nature, right? But if you have that relationship that really underpins that, then you can push through a lot of that noise because you really want to keep that that relationship intact. And that becomes more important to you than the business. And I, I think that's that's a really powerful sentiment, something I learned in copiers, right? When the first time that you go into a, into a, uh, into a customer, right, with a proposal that you know is better than your competition, better than everybody else that that, that came in and visited them, right? You know you've got the low end and you've got the best service in house and you lose the deal, right? What does that tell you? That tells you that relationship is king. Same page, man. You and I can probably discuss this for, for a couple hours here. I but, love uh, talking about sales process and methodology. <laughs> so yeah, you're right. We probably get yeah. some time yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, Sean, um, thank you for that little intro there. Let's talk about lease path. Uh, employee oh. number six. That's crazy, um, but makes sense based on kind of my history with the organization. Um, sure. So let's just, for the people who haven't potentially heard about um, your lease path, do you mind just kind of giving a quick elevator pitch? Uh, lease path is, it is the intelligent workplace platform for equipment finance. And for us, intelligent workplace include, is inclusive of the entire, the entire business, right? So from your originations, all of the sales capabilities that you need to, that you need to put forth uh, in your sales teams, um, taking all of those opportunities that you would bring in and then putting that through that entire originations journey with everything kind of built into that one single user interface. So you don't have to go different places like Experian portals and PayNet portals and T-Value to get the information and do what you need to do for your customers. And then um, on the, and then of course on the backside, well, actually taking that deal all the way to the point where dollars and cents become real. And then for that team that is making a decision on whether or not they're going to fund that with a, uh, with an external, uh, an external warehouse line with, uh, you know, keeping that on their own books with just pure, purely brokering that however they want to treat that, uh, that contract, those businesses can make those decisions and then either distribute those out fully electronically or now, as, as of last October, begin to service those contracts entirely within that single user interface. So we offer the only truly single user interface platform in the industry that's built on top of Microsoft Dynamics 365, which is, my, which is Microsoft's uh, core CRM uh, platform to enterprise. Um, so you, with LeasePath, you get the entire CRM of Microsoft Dynamics which is which is uh, fully featured for um, for any any large enterprise uh, on, on top of all of that great origination capability with lease path originate and now all of the servicing capability that you would need to take that contract all the way through to end of life with lease path with lease path enterprise um, and now of course we also have a a power portal that extends that view to your vendor and broker originators as well as your customers to give them some ability to manage their own contracts, self-service, and then self, uh, self-originate, of course, new deals that they would want to, uh, they'd want to do with you. So it's a really comprehensive solution and it's, it's continuously grown aggressively over the course of the, the last few years, not just with the implementation or sorry, the, the release of Lease Path Enterprise, but also with all of our quarterly releases that we, we've been bringing live every single quarter like clockwork. Every, every quarter we'll release tons of new features and functions to our, uh, to our legal lease path, which is what we call our user community. And every <laughs> single one of our, of our customers just gets all of that feature function for free every quarter like clockwork. Um, and so that is fundamentally the value of, of Lease Path Enterprise being that true intelligent workplace solution sure. that's fully configurable and allows that business to make changes, to be flexible uh, throughout their business, throughout their, their whole workflow so that they can support their customers despite whatever changing conditions come up. 
thank you for that. Um, well, well said. And I think back to my days of, you know, competing against lease path where, um, you know, it was just a front end solution on Microsoft, um, which was fine within itself. Right. And I think of the growth that you guys had because the end to end has truly only been out for what, less than a year, full year. I mean, you might've had people on it, but as yeah. far as you guys promoting that, I don't think it's been that long. No, no, uh, it's, a, no it's, it's a great point. No, we, we only released uh, Lease Path Enterprise officially to the marketplace last October. So a little bit more than a year, we've gone through now four releases, four quarterly, okay. quarterly releases uh, to, to continue to update and add new feature function to that platform. And it is, uh, it's, it's evolving very quickly and it's very exciting to watch um, something that we did spend two, three years uh, alongside our customers uh, building entirely within Dynamics so that we would be able to offer that single interface platform, right? Uh, entirely within the Microsoft ecosystem, um, okay. but still leveraging everything that our customers are going to require. We built that over the course of, a, of two, three years and then only went live when we had companies that actually were living in the platform and getting value out of it already, right? We didn't want to release it and launch it until we were at that point. And sure. so over the past year, we've, you know, the market has responded in incredibly well. Um, we've gotten lots of new opportunities, uh, lots of new implementations, uh, a number of teams that are in implementation right now. Um, and all of that is, you know, we're, we're continuing to scale up as we continue to add those new businesses. And, you know, we look forward to making a lot of new press releases here over the coming, uh, over the coming months of teams that have, uh, have brought the, sure. the system live. Um, but, you know, I think that, I think that process of gathering feedback from our customers, um, making sure that we were intentional about what we were building um, and, and doing it intentionally for this space, right? And doing it in such a way that we kept our brand promise of, uh, of platform, of, of keeping things focused on the platform, the, making sure that we approached uh, the, the build phase uh, with that in mind so that we can continue to productize, continue to, uh, to keep things flexible and configurable because, you know, and I, I'm kind of going on a diatribe here. I hope you don't mind. But when I, when I go out and visit, uh, visit companies, right, either in their offices, at conferences, uh, you know, wherever I get to show up and, and, and talk to folks, uh, you know, there's a lot of consistent themes that we come across, right? And one of those, and I know you hear this a lot, Jesse, is flexibility, right? The need to be flexible, in the way that you are paying out your contracts, right? In the way that you're originating your contracts, you need flex. You need a lot of flexibility because you might see an opportunity that comes up that because of the inflexibility of your systems, you just miss out on, right? And no one wants to hear that it was the inflexibility of our systems because we need to customize everything, you know, uh, and it takes six months to do anything, you know, real. Nobody wants to hear that we're missing out on opportunity because we can't add a field. Right, or because we can't make a mod make a simple change to the <clears throat> business process in our well, scenario. Right, but I'll play I'll play devil's advocate to that though, right? Because flexibility is huge, right? And I 100, but it's also being that partner where someone's like, I really need this, and you look at what percent of their business it really impacts, and you're just like, well, this is going to take this scope here. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, absolutely. And, and then and then it's like you know okay maybe do you really do you really do you really need that <laughs> sure yeah and dialing it into dial, <laughs> I guess, help, helping them identify what's the real problem and dialing yeah. it into what's that real solution right to you know solving the actual challenge instead of just giving them what they've asked for right you're absolutely right being a partner with a team is absolutely critical especially in an industry like ours where you and I both know that, you know, technology people tend to slap financial services as a category on this space and act like it knows what equipment finance needs. But then we, then you take a, a solution that's designed for something that's not equipment finance and try to bring it to bear here. And what happens, right? It tends to, it tends to be a real challenge because this is a very unique and sp specific business. And we all treat it that way, right? And so, um, so you're absolutely right. Having a partner that understands that, 
that understands the intricacies of this business is absolutely critical. And I think that's one of the reasons that we made that strategic decision years ago to not focus on anything outside of this space, because we felt, you know, this was an industry that was relatively underserved, uh, relatively, I'm being kind, uh, by technology for a long time. I used to joke that um, when I joined, I used to joke that when I joined uh, uh, LeasePath back in, uh, in 2017, uh, that, well, this was a joke, but the first conference I went to was espousing the, uh, the benefits of DocuSign and e-signature as a critical, uh, a, a critical technology that you really need to understand and adopt into your, into your business. And you're like, DocuSign has been out since like the mid eighties, my guy. <laughs> and we're still sort of talking about these very basic technologies as fundamental and, you know, additive. Now, granted that was seven years ago, we, things have changed quite a bit since then, right? We're having, yeah, but if, it, if, it, if it wasn't for COVID, would we have this rapid adoption of DocuSign? No, absolutely not. If it wasn't, if it wasn't for, COVID, we'd still be, if it wasn't for COVID, you and I both know that a lot of businesses, we won't say who, would still be, uh, you know, f- uh, angry about remote work even one day a week, right? But, it, you know, the world luckily did change, and it, that was a actually a boon for for Lease Path, right? Because cloud technology became a premium and important, and that's exactly what we're built on is that true cloud. Sure, sure, and then it's um, you know. Salesforce forever was just slaying it. Like we were losing front end mm-hmm. users, front end deals, you know, because when I got into the software side of this industry in 2011, it was all about the, what is it? What do we call those monolithic systems end to end? Like you need to have one system of record and everything else and the only one. And then that after like five years, it shifted a little bit where it's like, no, it's like, let's stick to the core competency. And then Salesforce would just, that upwards trajectory of holy cow, you know, we're losing yeah. all this stuff. You get some Salesforce platforms that come in. I mean, we still have a couple Salesforce front end providers today, but I would say to your point over COVID, I mean, you guys what grew five times, something like that. I mean, we, I think, I think in COVID we had nine or 10 people uh, today we have over 50. So I guess five times is actually, <laughs> 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 I hadn't thought about it, but uh yeah. I, I I should I should have those stats as the ready as the head of sales. Hey right? hey hey I, hey, hey it's, a, it's, right? it's, a, it's it's okay. <laughs> I, I've worked on enough uh, worked on enough RFPs and everything where I know numbers in my head about the different software companies. So uh, no, yeah. that's 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 fair. <laughs> I I just it's you know the head count the the head count is really exciting to me. Uh, you know what really gets me excited is the the different businesses that trust us, right? So you know when I came on board, I think we had six customers between. The U.S., Canada, and the U.K. Um, you know, today we have more than 50 businesses that are using the platform, um, and you know, those are spread out a- across those three regions: the U.S., Canada, the U.K., and Australia now. Um, and you know, we're, we're looking outside of that as well. And it's it, it's just been it's been really exciting to see all of the teams that, especially in this space where trust is absolutely at a premium, uh, make that decision to trust us at least path. And it's been really rewarding to be able to come through and cross those finish lines with, with them to see their businesses grow and evolve. Um, I see, that, I see what you threw, I see what you threw, I saw what you threw in there, crossing the finish line. I, I saw, I, that. I, I saw that. that. <laughs> and then how many, uh, how many employees are you guys up to now? Uh, I think 52 is the, is the count today. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, well, well, congratulations on that, Sean. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. It's still privately funded. You know, we haven't taken any private equity money. We're still, uh, you know, still growing the business privately. Um, and that also, you know, speaks to, it says something uh, to, to to businesses in the space, right, that might have been burned by a private equity uh, acquisition or two, right? Um, you know, that we, that we've, we've really made a commitment to building our business intelligently. Um, you know, I, I, I like to, I, I joke with folks that, you know, we, for a long time, we had never added anybody to sales and marketing, right? We just kept adding folks, adding folks, adding folks. And last year we started adding people in marketing, which is great. But to, to this day, I'm still the only sales guy. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, I thought you were sales and marketing. <laughs> yeah, we, we actually do have a marketing department now, which is really, really exciting. But I, I, I say that to say that I think that, you know, we've, we've made really smart decisions in the way that we've grown our business and we've continuously made the decision to put our resources into, uh, into bringing on teammates that can really help add more competencies to, uh, to our, 
to our, our platform uh, that can support our existing customers, right? Can can help them get the most out of their platform, whether that's you know teammates in different regions or again with different um, you know skill sets like backgrounds in AI, like our new vice president of product has. Uh, and you know again, I think it's those decisions that have allowed us to continue to scale up very, you know, very patiently, very intelligently and support our customers and continue to build trust with our customers in the process. Thank you for sharing, Sean. And then I guess while we're talking about like you being the only sales guy, you lived in the Dominican Republic. Was that before COVID hit or was that, uh, yeah, you moved there before, right? Uh, I didn't No, My wife uh, is from there um, uh, okay. originally. Um, but no, uh, we were we were down there, down in Santo Domingo, visiting her family. Oh, vi uh, visiting. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. And um, the, the extended visit. Just an extended. It visit. was a very extended visit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, uh, every every country had a different response to COVID um, when it hit, right? And uh, we were there in February and March, and um, you know, when everything was kind of going down, uh, and the DR decided that they were going to shut down the airports for a period of time. And so we were just kind of there for a while. Like we, we could have, we could have gone through the repatriation process, but my wife is originally from the Dominican. So uh, it was a little bit more challenging. Um, so we decided, sure. to, we decided to hunker down. Right. And uh, we got a car uh, because it was really hard to move around without one and uh, an air conditioning unit. Cause wow, was it really hot in the summer? Um, and before you know it, you know, you, you had a little bit of infrastructure around you, you, you know, you, you had a little bit of support and, you know, uh, moving back to Minnesota in September, uh, winter's right around the corner, my guy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, people, people like to come visit the Dominican in the winter because the weather is perfect. So, um, you know, we made the potentially risky decision to, uh, uh, to hunker down and, uh, you know, wait out the year. And by the end of the year, we decided that, this is this is fine. I've been on remote with Lease Path for years, and the company has has um, uh, it's uh, it's adapted to this new normal extremely well. In fact, we've we built a culture around uh, having our cameras always on and always being available to our teammates. Right. Um, so because of that, it just felt very comfortable to continue to work remotely. So we moved to Punta Cana, a couple hours away, in the you know the the vacation part of the island, and you know, found a nice spot and um, been living there ever since. And it's been, it's been fun. I have a little one-year-old now that's, uh, that's crawling around uh, little dogs. And um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's like living in a small town in sort of the middle of the Midwest, right? Where there's not a lot of grocery stores and um, things that are necessarily out to do, but the beach is lovely. So it's tough to complain. <laughs> Imagine that call to Jeff. So I got a little bit of a situation here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> hey there, hey there, boss. Uh, you know, because <laughs> I think I think he was just getting started with the company at that point in time too, and you're his main sales guy, and he's probably like, "Wait, what?" Like, but with his personality and just how he is. Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. you know, you're you're right. That was a really tough call to make, um, and obviously, um, obviously, it worked out. Uh, you know, I, sure. I I got to stick around, and uh, yeah, Jeff made the I would say the prescient decision to uh, to keep me around and uh, uh, and make sure that I continue to to lead sales. But it was definitely a very gracious uh, decision that he made to you know to take at that point he was newly on board we didn't have that deep of a relationship um you know he could have you know take he could have taken on anybody for for that role and sure. i'm obviously sure. hugely grateful that he uh that he he stuck it out with me and i think it's worked out for both of us sure sure um that's fantastic and you mentioned that you're a new dad to a one-year-old um you know how's uh How's that? I think I posed a question yesterday on LinkedIn where it was more like work-life balance because I, I still struggle with that, with the amount of, especially what, at least you're done with, oh no, you'd be in Indianapolis next week. So conference oh, yeah. season is not quite done yet. I'm assuming that's probably another reason not to go all the way home because it's like, I just have to go back there. So <laughs> precisely. Yeah. It is a little, it's a little tougher to get back there. Certainly. Um, 
yeah I, I will be i will be at indy for the for the nifa event in fact um i'm rolling off as chair of the newly formed uh nifa foundation committee uh so i've been chairing i've been chairing the uh uh the the nifa uh charity event um uh kickoff uh events <laughs> uh for the past uh, couple of years and uh you know we've we've been lucky enough to raise a lot of money for charity uh over that time over a thousand oh, sorry a hundred thousand dollars for charitable causes in the the past uh four awesome. shows been, yeah and this one's tracking to to do great great business as well this year uh in indianapolis at the uh at the fall nifa event um i i'm particularly honored to be uh supporting the folds of honor group uh who do, do a lot of a lot of services for veterans uh, we're going to be um, we're going to be hosting them. They'll be they'll be out to talk a little bit about what they do um, for for their um, for their customers, and uh, we're going to be offering merch uh, of theirs on site. And they've got some really great looking stuff. So that uh, there's going to be other opportunities to support them. Um, but I love uh, I love taking you know what we do and um, pulling a little bit of philanthropic energy towards uh you know towards important causes that are outside of our business i know you love to too in fact i think that was how you and i first got connected um was when you started um equipment finance cares and um you know and so it's been it's been very rewarding to be able to be a part of that and so i'd definitely be at, at indy because this is this will be my last uh my last conference and i want to pad my total for whoever is uh is coming in to have to have to beat me i'm a competitive guy so <laughs> I got that's I got to make sure so, got to make sure that total's up there. <laughs> so do I so I have to wait and give my check my EF cares check the folds after you resign or after you do <laughs> or before like when, when do I do that? You know I really I really appreciate if you threw that if you threw that there before buddy. Uh, be, that'd be nice. <laughs> I'm just I'm just I'm just busting your chops man. But yeah, no we'll um I'll be bringing a check with me um you know to give directly to folds. Oh that's great. Uh, that's great. Yeah. No, I mean, no, NIFA has been a great partner organization of EF Cares, and we love the work that you guys are doing. So just uh, oh, just keep it up. That's awesome, man. It, uh, that I, I so appreciate that. That's going to be so great for the for, for that team there. Um, yeah, I think that, uh, boy, given a, given a check on stage, you know, we've never actually been able to do something like that uh, because typically we'll tally it up and then um, make an announcement later. So, boy, that's going to be – that'll be a lot of fun. And, um, yeah, I, Man, that's that's so exciting. I'm pumped. Thank you. Yeah, no, no problem, man. I appreciate all the good work you guys are doing there, man. Chad, uh, Chad, and you guys have been building something good. Excited for the 501c3 to be fully in motion. Um, it just alleviates a lot of stress. <laughs> I'm sure that you've told yeah, it for absolutely. two years. <laughs> no, absolutely. No, I'm I'm looking forward to getting that in place too. Um, and I'll even though I'm rolling off as chair, I'll I'll remain involved with the foundation committee. Uh, you know, this is something I want to see be very successful going forward. And uh, yeah, getting that 501c3 in place is only going to help. Sure. So um, a few more questions before I let you go, Sean. So you've been in the industry for, oh, oh, I mean, you're almost a veteran right now, right? What are your thoughts on the equipment finance industry? Yeah, no, it's it's in an in interesting spot, right? Um, and you know, we see the the industry go through a lot of cycles, um, mergers and acquisitions, um, where you know then then you'll get kind of smaller players uh, sort of bubbling up from those folks that um, that leave those uh, that leave after those mergers and acquisitions are taking place, right? Um, and so I think that's a really healthy healthy cycle to go through, and I it makes me excited that. Uh, as businesses have, we've seen a lot of M and A recently. Um, it makes me really excited to see some of the some of those teams start to bubble up from the bottom. Um, interested in you know taking on new warehouse lines uh, for less institutional funders so that we can get more money in the space, right? Um, so there's more options. Uh, I also I see that you know the broker market has uh, has not been as strong over the past uh, the past few years, right? And I. I hope I look forward to the time when we can get some more activity there, uh, right? A lot of funders prefer to do business directly with their vendors or directly with their customers, which is, you know, it makes total sense. Um, but obviously, as we see, as we see more, um, uh, more with Section 1071, uh, more regulation come into the space that, uh, you know, the, those brokers are going to become more vital, right? And, uh, and I, I think I'm interested in seeing how 
how that market is going to continue to evolve over the next uh, couple of years. We obviously have an election coming up tomorrow, <laughs> and uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Well, you know, while we we know that um, individual elections don't tend to move the needle dramatically, you know, given a few months, right? Obviously, over time, we can see trends and and see how things sure. are going. And and I think the um, you know I think the trend is probably leading a little bit towards um, a, a, some disruption of what the industry does, but not in a way that it disrupts the core relationship uh, at the heart of the of the business, right? I think that thing about equipment finance even even no matter how much technology or regulation you throw at the space i think that that core relationship is always going to be king and something that i that i enjoy work when i working in the technology side of the space something i really enjoy is reminding my team internally and always keeping that up front for my customers uh you know often right that 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 relationship, which we, how we started this conversation, right? That that relationship really is king and everything in the equipment finance workflow is needs to revolve around strengthening that relationship because ultimately what our customers look to us for is not just technology to help streamline their business and automate their processes, right? It's to help them do what they do better so that they can support their customers so that they can provide their secret sauce. And some companies will say, my secret sauce is in my technology. It lets me work faster. I get better information to my customers. And that's certainly a competency. But I think that I think that that is I think that that relationship with that customer is never, ever going to be taken out of the prime position. Right. I think technology will always serve to enhance that relationship or should always look to enhance that relationship as opposed to replace sure. it. Right. And so, um, yeah, I, I see a lot of desire to use technology to, to, you know, take away customer touch. But we have one customer that uh, says high tech, high touch. And I think that's a really, really good way of approaching, uh, approaching the business. Interesting. Makes, uh, makes complete sense and well said. Um, I ask everyone who comes on this program to give me a little fun fact about themselves. Okay. Um, so I know, I know we've gone down a bunch of them at this point, but what haven't we discussed um, that makes Ta uh, Sean tick outside of heading sales at least path? Yeah, a lot of fun facts, man. Um, you know, you could talk about old jobs I've had. Uh, I've been an actor. I've worked at security. I've made money, you know, playing music. Um, I was a mime for one time. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's oh, fantastic. There's no pictures. Don't get too excited, but uh, <laughs> um, you know, uh, a lot of people, a lot of people at this last this last run of conferences didn't recognize me because, of course, I cut my hair and uh, gave it to Locks for Love. Um, I'm a I try to run marathons, and in fact, a, a colleague of mine are interested in raising some money so that we can uh, go run the Boston Marathon, maybe even with a group of equipment financiers, a uh, finance financiers. People yeah, in the fine. finance community. There we go. <laughs> e EF peeps. EF folks. Yeah, there we go. Um, there you go. <laughs> and uh, and you know, raise raise a little bit of money so that we can uh, get invited to go run the Boston Marathon. Um, but you know, uh, I I I uh, I'm a pretty I'm a pretty basic, pretty simple guy. Uh, I just tend to find I just say yes a lot. Tend to find myself in fun situations. <laughs> that Jim Carrey movie inspired me. You know what? It, in, in, I I know what movie you're talking about, and I don't. It it wasn't. I didn't enjoy it that much. But yeah, kind of. Sure. I'm just I'm just being a smartass. I'm sorry. It's all it's, in your head. But no, like, but no. I mean, like, it's there's there's some truth to that, right? The the idea that you know you just say yes. It's a lot more fun than saying no. It's a lot more interesting. At least leads to a lot more engagement interaction. I've had a lot of. I've had a lot of fun nights with uh, people that became really good friends, uh, sure. even if I was nervous because I just, you know, it wasn't afraid to say yes. <laughs> no, perfectly fair. And I guess my closing question I have for you, Sean, is why should someone want to do business with Sean Scampton and Lee Spath? Um, boy, you know, that's a, that's a great question. I think that there's, uh, <sighs> You know, uh, in terms of doing business with LeasePath, I could talk about our I could talk about our platform. I could talk about our technology that we are, 
you know, we're really built on modern, a modern intelligent platform. Um, and I can also talk about our brand values, right? And all of those, all of those brand values, you know, candidly, I believe in all of them too. You know, they, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the business coming from employee, being here as employee number six, right? Uh, you get to be involved in, um, in, in setting the culture for a business like this, even if, you know, you're not the, the head of that business. We, you know, our CEO sure. definitely, definitely our fearless leader um, and, uh, you know, definitely, definitely uh, drives everything that we, that we do as a business and we take all of our marching orders from him. But um, it's good to know that things that are important to me still get into our brand values, right? That we do show up for our customers and that we are, are constantly trying to figure out how do we build a better relationship with them as opposed to just keep, uh, keep the lines of communication more rigid, right? Um, I, we, we prove that trust matters. That's a, a key brand value um, at least path. And it's something that I really very much believe in. And I think that people that want to work with me personally, they do trust me and they, 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 they know that I won't lead them in, in the wrong direction. Right. Uh, my customers have um, communicated that to me over the years. I've been very, very honored to receive that feedback from them that they, they do trust me in that regard. And, um, and I, I take that very, very seriously. Um, and I'm also, I'm a team player, right? Uh, we, we at least path are, uh, we, we use the language of team. We use the language of us as opposed to me. And, uh, we have built a really, really incredible team. Uh, and we really prove that teamwork wins at, uh, it, both internally, you know, with our business, with our customers. And I think <laughs> of us individually, oh boy, what was that? <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> But I, I almost we, we almost made it all the we way almost through got, without a freaking yeah. dog thing. You know what? If you don't mind, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm not going to edit that out because that's the nature of us working we from home. But anyhow, I'll tell you, that first thing goes away. It's funny, <laughs> funny that that happens. I'll, I'll tell you this: I, I didn't, I didn't mention this when I talked about the Dominican. But uh, in my first place in Santo Domingo, if you ever met with me during that, Was that year, you? twenty, did you order food while I'm recording? <laughs> Who's that? Brooke. <laughs> oh, goodness gracious. How rude. Well, uh, anyhow, anyhow, sorry. I'm no, no. Interrupt you. no, no, I'll tell you this, because a doorbell <laughs> makes a lot more sense, a lot more sense than this. So at my place in Santo Domingo, my neighbor, we had a really, really tight townhouse, right? My neighbor, just, we all had our different things that we did in COVID. I grew my hair out and started running, right? A lot of people made sourdough bread. This guy built a cockfight ring in his backyard. And so this guy, yeah, it's exactly what it sounds like. And so this guy would bring over his friends and they would have their chickens, uh, roosters, sorry. And they would put on like little covers and fight in the backyard. And so I would be having a very normal conversation with someone. Oh, and this, by the way, is before Teams and Zoom figured out that noise cancellation was a really good idea. Uh, so I would be sitting, have a very, you know, normal meeting uh, with somebody about our software, about their their needs, and then you know, as we're having the conversation, all of a sudden you hear. Just let that sit for a moment, and uh, yeah. and that and and that was that was my life. Now, mind you, it was too hot to close the windows, so sure. that was just gonna happen. <laughs> sure, sure. So if it, sure. If, it, if it was gonna happen, it was gonna happen. And uh, so that was that was always a that was always a lot of fun. Uh, and, you know, I got to now now when we have someone, you know, like that, right, kid comes on the, the camera, right, doorbell rings, there's dogs barking in the background. It doesn't phase uh, me. One bit. <laughs> no, not at all. Still. Like, uh, well, Sean, I um, really appreciate your time today, man. I uh, look forward to seeing you uh, next week in Indianapolis. And, um, you know, congrats again on all your success to date and excited to see what the future holds for you, man. I appreciate that. We have a lot more success coming. And, uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, it's been a fun year. It's going to be a, a really fun year next year and uh, probably even more fun after that. So uh, it's it's uh, keep an eye on Lee's path. Uh, we're definitely we're definitely shooting to the moon and uh, uh, you'll <laughs> you'll will be a, a common occurrence on on monitor every uh, every couple of weeks here for the foreseeable future. <laughs> awesome. Congratulations, Sean. Take care, man. Have a good day. Cheers.